Chapter 18, and I believe we're going to be around verse 9, 10, but I'm going to start on where it says, Doom, Doom. Title of my message this morning is Short Time. I wanted to read you this because some theologians think that America is Great Babylon. We're not here to debate that, but it certainly could be. The Word of God says, Doom, doom, the great city is doomed. The city of Babylon, strong city. In one hour, it's over. Your judgment has come. The traitors will cry and carry on because the bottom dropped out of business. Sound familiar? No more market for their goods. Gold, silver, precious gems, pearls, fabrics of fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, perfume, wood, and vessels of ivory, precious every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble. Cargoes of cinnamon and spice, of incense, myrrh, and frankincense, of wine and olive oil, of the fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages, and human beings sold as slaves. Human beings sold as slaves. The market today that exceeds the market for illegal weapons is people being sold. 4.5 million people are trapped and forced in to sexual exploitation globally. That's a whole lot of people, Brother Charles. Here in the book of Revelations, we see that the Bible predicts this that men would be selling people. If you read the King James Version, it says also, it says selling of slaves and souls. Mm -hmm. Souls. Well, the Bible says, amen, I believe it's Mark chapter 8, verses 36 and 37. It talks about, for what will a man profit if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? Look around this morning. What would you give in exchange for your soul? Judas gave his soul for 30 pieces of silver, and we preach on him all the time. How that he betrayed the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Folks today are betraying the Lord for a lot less. We are not putting God first and foremost in our life. We are living a life like we want to find all the pleasure that we can get. And the Bible says that in the last days they'll have a form of godliness, but that's it. They deny the power thereof. They are pleasure-seeking individuals, and all they want is what they want. We're seeing that not only in Crete, Illinois, at Miracle Temple, but it's all over the globe. People are selling out because they no longer want to serve a God that would interrupt their lifestyle and take away the, some of the fleshly pleasures that they've been enjoying. Yes. See, the Bible says if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts and desires of the flesh. If you walk in the Spirit, but you got to walk in the Spirit. we got to realize we need to get back in the realm of the Spirit. Amen. We need not only to have the Holy Ghost in our life, we need to pray, we need to praise, and we need to seek God because the Lord inhabits the praises of His people. Yeah. His ear is open to the cry of His people. I hear all the time about all the mega problems we have. Amen. And how we can't take it, we can't make it. But let me tell you something. Jesus is the answer yeah. to all your troubles. Yeah. I put on Facebook before you tell me about all your troubles. Let me tell you about my answer. His name is Jesus Christ.
Christ, the yeah. Son of the living God. There is no other name whereby men shall be saved except the name of Jesus. That name is higher than every name that's ever been named. Amen. Yeah. God is getting ready, I believe, to shake the world and everything that's not rooted and grounded upon a solid foundation will not stand. The Bible tells us about a man that built his house upon the sand and one that built his house upon the rock. The rock is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That rock that the builders disallowed but became the chief cornerstone. If you know anything about the cornerstone, it's the stone that holds everything else together. The only thing that holds me together in this last day we're living in is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Bible said the storms came on both houses. The rains poured. The winds blew. The storm was equally poured upon the house that was founded upon a rock as it was the house founded upon the sand. But guess what, folks? The one on the sand did not stand. That's right. But the one on the rock, amen, it weathered the storm. It weathered the storm. It was still standing. They tell me about the palm tree, amen, in Florida. They say the hurricane winds can blow as hard as they want to blow. But that old palm tree will begin to sway. It'll go all the way down with those winds. But as soon as the wind lets up, that palm tree comes back up. They tell me because the palm tree has more beneath the earth than it does sticking up on the earth. I got more in God than I got in this world. And when the storm comes, I'm going to remember. Remain standing in the name of Jesus Christ, my ever present help in my time of trouble. I'm preaching better than you're shouting this morning. Hallelujah. We're living in that day, Brother Charles. We can see. It seems like everything is coming against Christianity. Oh, we got comedians that hold up the head of a sitting president. And then accuse him of ruining her life. What kind of sense does that take? Huh? That's like me coming out here and punching you in the nose and blaming you for me punching you. Yeah. <laughs> he ruined my life. No, you ruined your own life. Yeah. It's like people, amen, in this church and people in the world. You burn your own life when you get out of the life of Christ. Because if you have Jesus, you have life. He's given you the power and the ability to go against any power or anything that ever comes up against you. You have the authority over it. You don't need to be defeated. You don't need to be conquered because you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen. Revelation 12, 12 says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. He knows he has but a short time. The devil is aware that he has a short time. The Bible says the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. But Jesus came to give you life and that more abundant. Oh, the devil's yeah. busy doing his work while the church is sitting back like a sleeping giant in bondage, not waking up to the spiritual amen trumpet that we're hearing that God is ready to shake the world and everything that's not rooted and grounded upon the solid foundation of the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Who came down. He is the Word. He dwelt among us. He gives us the power. He gives us the spiritual ability to defeat the devil. Yes, we do. Hallelujah. When we talk about the last days, the world's talking about it, Brother Charles. Yes, it is. We're living in the last days. You know, we're hearing about climate change. We hear about the Paris tree broken. 
That treaty was nothing but taking money out of the pockets of people in the United States of America and distributing it to other parts of the country who were going to do nothing to limit the carbon that they produce. But we're so feeble-minded today. If a Hollywood star says something, or if some uh, politician gets up uh, and says something, or some talking head uh, on the news media tells you that we're just going to see the world explode uh, because of climate change, uh, because we don't give trillions uh, to the rest of the world, uh, we're going to just be killers. Uh, that's a lie. Yeah, come on. That's the true. devil's a father of them. Yes, he is. Let me assure you today, when the weatherman, when we was getting ready to have our picnic forecast rain up to the time that we was going to have the picnic, Sister Mary, but we prayed and the rain didn't come. We had our picnic without rain. You telling me you can't tell me the weather for the morrow, but you can tell me the weather for a hundred years in the future? I don't think so. I'll tell you one thing, bless God, it's all in the hand of God. You don't control anything. The Bible says the king's heart is in the hand of God. He'll turn him any way he wants to earn him. Amen. I thank God gave us a space of grace for this president to be in office at this time so Jesus Christ can shape the foundations of this church, the church as a whole, so we wake up from that sleeping slumber and begin to realize God is greater than anything we might face at this time. When we talk about the last days, Matthew 24, 4 and 5 says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Mm -hmm. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. What name? The name of Christianity. Yeah. Man, everybody's a Christian today. <laughs> you know, we, we say America's a Christian nation. Far be it from America being a Christian nation. We have slaughtered almost 60 million babies mm -hmm. since Roe versus Wade. We have done so many things. We've legalized gay marriage. Anybody with any sense can realize two men are not supposed to be together. The plumbing don't work. Amen. Anybody ought to be able to realize that you're either male or female, but they can't. Amen. I've seen where they're coming out with lace shorts for men to wear. Rumpers, amen. Don't come to this church, men with no lace shorts on or no rumpers, amen, because we ain't going to have it here at Miracle Temple. The devil is just exploding with his evil because he knows that he has but a short Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I said that about the men. Let me tell you, some of you women, you need to wake up too. Don't put 10 pounds of potato in a 5 pound sack. It don't look right. <laughs> Hello. I'm telling you, we used to have some modest dressing going on in the house of God. Now we think we ought to just wear everything and show everything. Amen. Amen. I seen one captain say, Listen, lift your hands up. Bend down and touch your toes. If anything shows, go home and change your clothes. Amen. Hello, so do it outside before you get in the church. Amen. We're not here, hallelujah, to, to try to get someone, uh, amen, caught up in sexual lust. Uh, we're here, amen, to get caught up uh, in the spiritual things of God. Uh, we're here today to realize that God uh, has given us a mandate to preach uh, the glorious gospel around this globe. Uh, can somebody praise the Lord? Amen. Mark chapter 13, 4 and 6, it says, Disciples said, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all the things will be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, no man deceive you. For many will come in my name saying, I am he. And he will deceive many. Oh, we got so many today, amen, pouring out their deception. 
You can just look on television, you can see the deception. It's constantly bombarding your mind and your heart. Uh, amen. Uh, or sometimes I just like to turn the TV off. Amen. Put the earphones in uh, and listen to the Word of God for hour upon hour. Uh, hallelujah. soothes my spirit. Uh, it writes God's Word upon the tables of my heart uh, that I might not sin against Him. Uh, amen. I want to be ready uh, to be caught up in the air uh, to meet the Lord there. Can somebody say amen? Uh, I want to be ready when He comes. Uh, hallelujah. I don't want to be standing here, amen, undone. Amen. I want to know that I'm walking in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many are coming and deceiving many. And Luke reports the same thing in Luke 21, 6 and 8. They deceived them in school, deceived them in the courts, Deceived by politicians, deceived by Hollywood. Deceptions even coming in the church. The Lord said if He does not shorten the days, even the elect would be deceived. Did you hear what I said? The Lord said this, not me. He said if I do not shorten the days, even the very elect would be deceived. That means God's very people. He said, but for the elect's sake, I have shortened the days. Now I want to tell you something today. Jesus don't even know when He's coming, but He's coming. God's the only one that knows. It's given to the Father to know. Amen. But today, we're going to go outside of Scripture a little bit to get into Scripture. I'm telling you when Jesus is coming. Perk up, listen real good, because I'm going to tell you when He's coming. How many wants to know when He's coming? Amen. In an hour that you think not, your Lord does come. Amen. Not with an hour when you think He's coming, but when you don't think He's coming. Amen. It's like walking in on your children and them cussing up a storm because they didn't know you was coming home, but you came home early and caught them. Or they just having a party in your house and they thought you were on vacation, but you left a little early and came back to the house and found them in that way. That's the way the Lord's going to come. As a thief in the night, not when you're ready. Amen. He's going to come and you better be ye ready. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, I said, be ye ready. For in an hour, you think not, He's coming. Amen. You know, we have seen such destruction come to America. Their households, their families, schools, courts. All kinds of things. You know, we've got courts now making law. How many of those we got three branches of government? We got the legislative branch that makes laws. The executive branch carries out the law. Judicial evaluates the law. But the judicial now is making the laws. And the devil, he's mad because I read to you, he got but a short time. See, when the devil gets mad, he's going to start persecution like never before. When you read about Great Babylon, you find that many have been martyred and the blood has been shed of Christians. Amen. If truly America is Great Babylon, we haven't seen yet what the devil's going to begin to do. Because in John the Revelator said, I saw those beheaded for Christ's sake. Yeah. We ain't seen that in America yet. Not in the scope the Word of God tells us is going to happen. The devil's getting mad. Well, I'm telling you something, he's getting enough just by just giving them another way. See, there is a way that seemeth right to man, but the end thereof is a way of destruction. Every man in his own heart thinks he's right. But sometimes he's deadly wrong. As a man thinketh in his heart, the Word of God says, so is he. Amen. You might be deceived and not even know you in deception. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1-12 through 12 says, Now, brother, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come or its past.
Christ already. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. You look around, folks, you can see a great falling away. It's coming. It's here. That falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that all is worship, so that he sets as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he uh, may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Uh, only he who now restrains will do so uh, until he is taken out of the way. Uh, when the church leaves this world, uh, all hell is going to break loose. Uh, the only thing restraining the devil uh, and the man of lawlessness uh, is the word of God uh, inside the people of God. Can somebody say amen? amen. His spirit dwelling with within us as we are part of the body of Christ. Yeah. Glory. And then the lawless one will be, re be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders Amen. and with all unrighteousness, deception, among those who perish become because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. They did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. People say, oh, I love God. Oh, I'm just so uh, in love with Jesus. Let me tell you something. It's more than just mouth service. See, God says, uh, your lip service uh, is there, but your heart is far from me. God don't just want your lip service. He wants your heart uh, to be sold out to Him. We need to realize that not only Jesus is the Savior of our life, but He needs to be the Lord of our life. Can someone say amen? amen. The enemy is mad. That's why He's trying to take people from the truth. That's why we got some, you know, preaching different doctrines that are not of God. We've got some that will preach only the positive and never give you the negative. Mm -hmm. Like I always say, folks, go out there and take one terminal off your battery. On that battery, there's a positive and a negative terminal. Take one of them off and guess what? Your car ain't going to start. You don't have no power. If you don't get both the positive and the negative, you will not have the power of God in your life. See, the Bible says, amen, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You know, you can stop right there. But he that believeth not shall be damned. There's a positive and there's a negative. Yeah. All the promises yeah. come, amen, with a commitment on your part. We think, oh, God put a bunch of promises in the Bible and all I have to do is play. No, you have to meet the conditions that God placed in His Word in order to get the promises that God has promised. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, amen? You know, people amaze me. I talk to people sometimes about tithes, and they think the only thing they got to do is give 10%. And that 10% is going to just make them rich and never have a bill, never have a trouble, never have a problem. Let me tell you, it don't happen that way. God gives you a hundred percent. Did you hear that? A hundred percent. You give God back 10%. That 90% God expects you to be a good steward of. So you've got to be like the man of God in the Bible. Joseph, when, when the good years were there, what did he do? He stored up for the lean years. So you don't know when the lean years are coming. So always have wisdom to store up something. Most people live right to the edge of their income or beyond their income and they can't do without a thing. That's a deception from the devil that gets you enslaved in debt because the debtor is enslaved to the lender. Amen. And what do we say? Save souls, man. Become slaves. 
What, Brother Wallace? No, you ought to be a slave to no man. The only thing you ought to owe any man, the Word of God says, is to love him. Amen? Amen. Love him. Well, see, we don't want to talk about that. We want all the good and none of the bad. See, God said He'll bless us coming and going. He said He'll bless our basket. He said He'll bless everything we touch our hands to. He'd bless it. For so many of us, Sister Mary, we just want the blessing without the cost of the blessing. See, somebody pays for the blessing. Yeah. And somebody say, Amen. Amen. And the enemy says, because they don't love the truth, they're not saved. And for this reason, this reason, listen, because they didn't love the truth, God will send strong delusions that they should believe the lie, mm -hmm. singular, the lie, mm -hmm. they the one truth and one lie. Yeah. The Bible says the devil was the father of the lie. Mm -hmm. He gave birth to it, folks. He gave birth to it. So there he is. That they may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Had pleasure in unrighteousness. The devil's trying his best to deceive the church by any means he can. God's sending strong delusions because some would rather believe the lie than the truth. But they had pleasure in unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. We see that today. Two types of churches today. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 31 says, Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second, second prophets, third teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administration, and varieties of tongues. Then you got the gifts, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, uh, and the interpretation of tongues. Nine gifts, amen. God has placed in the church for the perfecting of the saints. You got the fruits in Galatians 5, 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is joy, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Nine fruits and nine gifts. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 through 26 says this. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering because a double-minded man can't expect to receive anything of the Lord. So let us hold fast without wavering. What's wavering? That's in and out all the time. You're like a, the sea blown by the wind. Like clouds without water. A well that's gone dry. You need to realize God wants to pour into your life that you pour out into others' lives. For freely have you received, freely give the Word of God says. God doesn't bless us to hold on to the blessing. He blesses us to bless others. He doesn't save us just for us to get in a corner and become a closet Christian. Amen. He tells us to get out there in the world and preach the gospel. Can someone say amen? Amen. It says in verse 23, chapter 10, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for He is faithful who promised. Amen. And let us consider one another in order to stir up the love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as we see the day approaching. So much the more as we see the day of the Lord approaching. If I ask you before I preach this message, how many believe Jesus is coming and is coming soon? Most people would have raised their hand and said yes, but we're going to go to church last. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. Is that what the Word of God said? No, the Word of God said, Go even more Amen. as you see the day of the Lord approaching. For if we willfully sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there, rem there no longer remains a sacrifice for the sins. For yet a little while, and He is coming. He who is coming is, will come 
and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Well, that's not what you're hearing a lot of these preachers talk about. A lot of these preachers talk about don't worry about your sins, past, present, and future. Everything is okay. Don't worry about it. God understands. God don't understand adulterous affairs. He don't understand fornication. He don't understand lying. He doesn't understand none of that stuff that's sin. And sin will drive you from God. Because God cannot look upon sin. Can someone say amen? amen. Well, I heard the preacher on television say, don't worry about that. God understands. God doesn't understand. The Bible said if we sin willfully, there remain no more sacrifice for sin. But looking forward to the judgment of God upon our lives, what you sow, you shall reap. Amen? Amen. You don't just come to the Lord and then say, I'm going to live the same life as I did before I came to the Lord. We got churches today that were five and six and seven and ten and a hundred couples uh, set in and not even married but living together. Unheard of. 30, 40 years ago. Unheard of. Young women out sleeping around doing everything they know they can do and instead of coming to church and acting like a great saint of God. Cheaters could be filmed in some churches. But let me tell you something. That is not God's Word. And God does not excuse sin. Sister Kim, if that was all true, then why in the world did He say, if you sin, yeah. confess that sin, and He's faithful and just to forgive you of that sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness because He knows you can sin. But let me tell you the difference. The difference is saints hate sin and sinners love it. When I was a sinner, I loved to sin. Amen. But now that I've become a saint, every time I do something wrong, I've got to ask forgiveness. Every time something comes and pricks my heart and says that wasn't right, I've got to go to the Lord and say, Lord, please forgive me. I'm a sinner. I'm saved by grace, but I'm a sinner. Forgive me of that sin. And God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But He said, confess it. Brother Charlton, the Word of God tells us to come together in the church and confess our faults, our sins, one to another for what reason? So that we might be healed. Amen. Then the Bible tells us when we take communion, it says some are sick and some are asleep, which means they died mm -hmm. because they took of the communion yeah. when they should have. See, it's called Holy Communion. It's for folks that believe in being holy. For there is a highway to holiness. Yeah. And the Word of God does say, Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Do you want to see Him? I want to see Him. Because yeah. the Bible says, When I see Him, I shall be like Him. And every man that hath this hope in himself uh, purifieth himself, uh, even as he uh, is pure. Can somebody say that? Yeah. Oh, I want to see Him. Yeah. But we're not going to see Him if we don't love Him right. and love the truth. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 6, 4 and 6 says, For it's impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good Word of God and the powers of the age to come. If they fall away, I thought you said they couldn't fall away. The Bible says if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance. Since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put Him to an open shame. Mm -hmm. Put Him to an open shame. Hard, almost impossible for people just to go out and just say that they're going to go a different way and accept a different God and still going to go to heaven. It ain't going to happen that way. See, what this is referring to, 
is when you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then all of a sudden you give up on Him and you go and say, no, I don't believe that no more. I, I'm going to believe in uh, being a Muslim. I'm going to worship Allah. And I'm going to serve uh, Muhammad. Then you're going to a devil's hell. Yeah. If your name's written in the book, evidently the Bible says he'll block their name out of the book. Yeah. Right. My understanding is everybody in creation's name is in the book. But if you don't come to Christ, He blocks you out of the book. Can you say amen? amen. He has that ability. He has that ability. How, how do you get that, Brother Walls? I get that because He says that it's His desire that everybody be saved. Uh, that if anybody come to Him, He would in no wise cast them out. Uh, God wants everybody in humanity saved. Uh, he wants everybody to know Him. Uh, in the power of the resurrection of the Son of the living God and being made conformable unto His death and know His suffering also. And then, amen, and only then do we realize the price that it cost. For our salvation. Well, Brother Walt, I thought it was free. No, it cost God His Son. And it cost His Son His blood. Yeah. Let's go back to chapter 10 of the book of Hebrews. 28th verse. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. 29. Of how much sore punishment do you suppose will... He be taught worthy, taught worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which He was sanctified, a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. A fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We have but a short time, folks. We have but a short time, and I don't have much time left. But let me tell you something. We're here today, and the world is around us trying to persuade us to give in to everything. Amen. Those two thieves hanging on the cross next to Jesus. One was concerned about his flesh, and the other was concerned about his spirit. One turned to the Lord and said, get us off this cross, amen, get us out of this situation. And another one turned to him and said, Lord, you've done nothing to deserve death. When you come into your kingdom, would you remember me? That's what I want to say. I'm here, I'm guilty, but Lord Jesus, you died on an old rugged cross that I might have life and that more abundant. When you come into your kingdom, would you remember me? Yes. There's a separation, Sister Kim, that's going on. The sheep from the goats, the wheat from the tares, the bitter from the sweet, the light from the darkness. There's a separation. And it means heaven or hell. It's real, folks. Hell is real. Rich man died. Lifted his eyes up in hell. Said, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, Lazarus is setting up there in your bosom. Can you let him dip his finger in the water? And come and soothe my parched tongue. For I'm tormented in these flames. Let me tell you something. You read the Word of God, you'll find that the flames are never extinguished. But that rich man knew that one drop of heaven and water could put out all the fires of hell. But the Word of God said there's a fixed gulf in between us. We can't come to you and you can't come to us. There's going to be a separation time when folks go to hell and have no more chance whatsoever. You might walk through hell's door and it belches forth all that stench of burning souls that have been burning for eternity. You might see a sign all that enter here are damned and they've lost all dreams and hopes right now not tomorrow not next week today is the day of salvation this is the accepted time of the Lord we don't wait for next year next month we don't wait till we get ready because you're never going to get ready 
Oh, as soon as I get straight for the walls, I, I'm giving in. I'm going all the way with God. No, you're not because you will never fix yourself. The only thing that can fix you is Jesus Christ. The only thing to fix this old boy was Jesus Christ. You wouldn't have enough wanted to know me before I got saved. You wouldn't have wanted to be around me before I got saved. But let me tell you something. Now that I am saved, I love the truth. And I'm going to preach the truth. I don't care how many devils it upsets. I'm preaching the truth. How many people might get offended? I'm preaching the truth. How many saints that I might cause to be empty in the church? I'm preaching the truth. Many shall turn their ears from the truth and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So if you get offended at my preaching, and you turn around and you walk through that back door. You're turning your ears from the truth. And the devil will be right there. The Word of God says, when you sow the Word of God, immediately the devil come up to steal what's been sown in your heart. Will you stand to your feet?